What is tact planning, tact control? In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the commonly used term with the IGLC and LCI and other lean and organizations and institutes that talks about TPTC, tact planning and tact control, and why the terms are important, why it's important to plan your job using tact, why it's important to control flow in the field once you have your tact plan, and I'm gonna dispel some myths with it and get some real good clarity on where we should head with these definitions and how you can use this to your advantage on your construction sites. If you're into that, you've come to the right place. Stay with us. All right, so this is my jam. I love this. Here's a couple things I wanna tell you. There's a three-part series that I really want you to check out. The first book is called Tact Planning, and it talks to you about, or it explains in mostly pictures, it's a beautiful book, how to plan your project with lean construction scheduling systems, meaning with a flow, according to production theory and lean theory. The second book is called uh, The First Planner System. This is how you plan a project in pre-construction according to all of the lean components that must be in place and how you involve the trade partners. Fantastic book. The third book is called Tact, Steering, and Control. And the reason I wanna to talk to you about tact planning, tact control, is I want that to lead into this concept of tact, steering, and control. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna super shout out my homies, Marco Binniger and Janusz Louis. The Germans, as we lovingly reference them, they're both doctors, so it's Dr. Binniger and Dr. Louis, who have studied lean construction scheduling and specifically tact planning and flow for decades now and are responsible for the software tacting, which is amazing, the simulation that we use at Lean Tact and at Elevate, and a lot of other really industry-leading techniques. So I like to anchor back to their work. I've talked to them about this specifically. I honor their work, we reference them all the time. Literally, all of the knowledge that I have in reference to modern-day TAC techniques has, have originated with some of their work. And so what I wanna do is explain to you what tact planning, tact control is, and really get our minds wrapped around the definition and then explain where we can take it. So let's go. So tact planning is the system whereby you plan a project in a time by location format, right? With zones according to attack time so you can achieve beautiful diagonal trade flow. There's a way to calculate the ideal number of zones, the ideal tack time, and shorten the overall throughput without ever hurting trade partners. It complies with all lean concepts I've ever been exposed to, especially the concept that talks about one piece or one process flow. So that means a trade partner can plan, build, and finish in a zone, zone, after zone, after zone, after zone, on a tack time, beautiful, beautiful scheduling system. That's tack planning. It's superior to CPM, everything's superior to CPM, but it really aligns with Eliehu Goldratt's work listed in the goal and what he specifically outlines in his book called Critical Chain, which is proven to be much more successful than CPM. Okay, so that's tact planning. Tact control is namely this. I'm gonna reference a article by Dr. Janos Louis and Dr. Marco Binninger that references tact control and construction. So let me give you an overview of what tact control is. Tact control is known as management managing the Gemba. The Gemba is the place of work, or it's referenced as shop floor management. So you're talking about the Gemba, the place of work, or the floor, controlling it, managing that environment. The goal is to control that environment through short cycled meetings with the people responsible for executing the work, utilizing tact control boards, that will enable the people doing the work to solve real problems. And typically in these short cycle daily meetings with the people doing the work, they will measure things like number of workers per trade, number of machines, rate of compliance with the TAC plan, defects in quality, safety figures, number of disruptions to the work, and information on cleanliness and tidiness. The purpose of this is to gather data, see as a group, identify problems, make real solutions, and gather information that will help with future projects and future tack times. So that's really what tack control is. So I'm going to stick with the definition provided by Dr. Binniger and Dr. Louis. Now, the reason that I'm mentioning this, when you hear tact planning, tact control, or TPTC, I want you to move into the realm of 
TSC, Tact Steering and Control, or you can do TPSC, Tact Planning, Steering and Control, because what we need to have on our project site is an ability to plan in a time by location format, see that beautiful flow, optimize the phase, all things listed in the book Tact Planning, then we need to separate this tack control definition. And tack control is a good way to describe it because I want to separate it into tact steering and control. Steering is technically also control and control is control, but we don't control people. So tact control means controlling the environment. Tact steering means steering the train of trades by configuring the zones properly and by packaging the tact wagons or the work packages properly and adjusting system constraints. With your environment, Environment, you will always have roadblocks that need to be removed and with the system meaning the train of trades and your zones or the train and the tracks you will always have system constraints so roadblocks and constraints separating these two really helps you and helps us and helps me to explain it because system constraints like tack time zone quantity how the trades are packaged how the zones are configured right these are all things that should be designed as a part of the system design these are things that supers and PMs really dig into and monitor continually. This means if you're driving your train and steering it, meaning by through your tracks, that you can see how your train is performing and how fast it's going. Tact control is where the foreman focus on clearing things out of the way of the train and making sure that you have a solid environment where that train can operate. And so the reason that it's important to separate these is because if you don't isolate roadblocks and keep the foreman's focus on the environment and clearing the path and making work ready, they will get overwhelmed with doing roadblocks or eliminating roadblocks and adjusting constraints and they will get confused about what they're doing. Here's the key. If you're literally steering your train down the train tracks, you need to know your dashboard for how the train is doing, how fast the train is moving, and you need to know that your train tracks are solid. If you are going down the tracks, you also need to see out ahead and make sure there are no boulders, no cows, no weather out ahead that would cause you to adjust or stop the train. So you keep the foreman's eye focused on clearing the path and controlling the environment. We do not control people. Okay, so control, I like that word, only being focused, only being used to describe the control of the environment. So I'm taking tact planning, it's the same. Tact control, and we're moving it into two definitions, tact steering of the train, tact control of the environment, which means that we will remove roadblocks out ahead and adjust system constraints within the train and the tracks, and that foremen can know exactly where to focus, supers and PMs know exactly where to focus. So tact steering and control is the process whereby we adjust system constraints so the train of trades can move through your project. Tact control is where through the meeting system and huddles with the foreman boots on the ground and the workers, you have those same short cycle daily huddles that can literally improve the circumstances within the zones and you can focus on what's called zone control, which is where you analyze how well you're tracking to finish a certain zone boundary within a tack time and you plan ahead and finish behind you. It's really quite fantastic because you know you're flowing on a construction project if you're hitting your handoffs and if you're winning in the field. Let me anchor you to another book that will help us out with this. There's a book called This Is Lean by Nicholas Modig and Par Alstrom. I'm not pronouncing the last name properly, but I do have Nicholas Modig right. In the book, he talks about three key concepts for lean. Number one is just in time, meaning according to a flow. The judoka principle, which means that you must be able to to see what winning looks like and Kaizen, the ability to continuously approve based on how you're doing. In the tact steering and control system, you are able to know how the train should flow, okay? You are also able to see what winning looks like within your zone boundary and your tack time. So you have the judoka principle. And number three, you're able to, with the foreman, boots on the ground, shop floor management in the field, at the Gemba, make improvements. But everybody knows who's supposed to do what. Form and clear roadblocks, they see and remove roadblocks before they impact the train, and the supers and the PMs as a part of the system design will adjust zone boundaries, tack times, 
work packaging and the material procurement system, that other production system will adjust it so that that train is actually flowing at its optimum speed. In summary, tact planning tact control needs to switch to tact planning steering and control. Steering focuses on the train and constraints. Tact control focuses on roadblocks and the environment. And this is the definition. We have a great book coming out called Tact Steering and Control. We list everything that you need to know about constraints, everything you need to know about roadblocks, how to run the meeting system, how to perform your zone control, how to absorb delays and manage delays, and how to keep foremen accountable according to KPIs, and how to to really improve the system so you have good flow in the field. Great book, we'll link it to you in the description below, but the bottom line is if you hear TPTC, think about TPSC or TSC, Tact, Steering and Control, pick up the book. This is how you create flow in the field. Everything is outlined in it. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.